Okay. We're recording. All right. Awesome. Okay. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us now or in the future for the Mistreant Book Club. This week we are reading our, no, this is our youth, not our town. This is a <laughs> slightly a different play. play. Yeah, it's a play of about um, Barbies and Squirt guns. watching Full House. Yes. Yep. I could be wrong. Tamagotchis. Oh, oh, it's about feeding your Tamagotchis. My Little Pony. Yep. Your Little Pony. Yep. That's an important part of this play. Uh, <laughs> I don't wear Little Ponies. Uh oh. Um, this week, we are promoting the charity breakout.org, which is a charity that helps to end criminalization. Um, I should have read this more thoroughly. <laughs> just, it, it just ends criminalization, yeah. period. Very, no yeah, more crimes. Nice. Yeah, really that's important. right, no, more, no, no crime at all. Breakout envisions a city where transgender, gender non-conforming, and queer youth of color can live without fear of harassment and discrimination. Fantastic. You can find that? them at... That's way better than no crime. <laughs> you can find them at youthbreakout.org. Youthbreakout.org. Uh, all right. We will go through now and say who everybody is reading for this week. And I like when it's the random awkward silence between who's going to speak next. All right. Um, oh, um, um, I'm, I'm uh, uh, Thomas. I'm a member of the collective, and I'm going to be reading for Warren. I'm Andy. I, oh no. Ah! Uh, I'm a member of the collective. I'm reading uh, for Dennis. And I'm Sadie, and I'm reading for Jessica. I'm Erin, and I will be reading the stage directions. So without further ado, this is our youth, Act One. A cloudy Saturday night in March, 1982, after midnight. A small, impersonal pillbox studio apartment on the second or third floor of a somewhat run-down post-war building on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, between Broadway and West End, lived in by Dennis Ziegler. There is a TV and a stereo, a lot of records, some arbitrary furniture, a little used kitchenette, and a mattress on the floor in the corner. Scattered around the room are piles of the New York Post, sports magazines, and a lot of underground comic books. There is sports equipment in the apartment, if not actually in view. The room looks lived in, but aside from a wall of photographs from Dennis' life, no effort whatsoever has been made to decorate it. It looks like it could be packed up and cleared out in a half an hour. Dennis is watching TV. He's a grungy, handsome, very athletic, formerly long-haired kid, just 21 years old, wearing baggy chino-type pants and an ancient polo shirt. He's a very quick, dynamic, fanatical, and bullying kind of person amazingly good-natured and magnetic, but insanely competitive and almost always successfully so. A dark cult god of high school only recently encountering, without necessarily recognizing, the first evidence that the dazzling, aggressive, hipster techniques with which he has always dominated his peers might not stand him in good stead for much longer. The buzzer buzzes. Dennis is too cool to answer it right away. It buzzes again. He gets up and goes to the intercom. Yeah. Warren, over the intercom. Yo, Dennis, it's me, Warren. What do you want? Yo, let me up. Dennis hits the buzzer, sits down, and watches TV. There's a knock at the door. Again, he doesn't answer it right away. Another knock from off. Yo, Denny. Dennis gets up and unlocks the door without opening it, then plops down again to watch TV. Warren Straub comes in the front door. He's a skinny 19-year-old, a 
a strange barking dog of a kid with large tracks of thoughtfulness in his personality that are not doing him much good at the moment, probably because they so infrequently influence his actions. He has spent most of his adolescence in hot water of one kind or another, but is just beginning to find beneath his natural eccentricity a dogged self-possession his friends may not all share. And despite his enormous self-destructiveness, he is above all things a trier. His language and wardrobe are heavily influenced by Dennis, but only up to a point. And he would be a good looking kid if he eased up on his personal style a little. He comes into the apartment lugging a very big suitcase and an overloaded heavy duty hiking backpack. Hey. With the suitcase. Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. Warren closes the door and puts down his stuff. Sits down next to Dennis on the mattress and looks at the TV. What are you watching? Lock the door. Warren gets up and locks the door. He sits down as before. What are you watching? Dennis flashes off the TV with the remote control. Nothing. What do you want? Nothing. I don't have any pot. I don't want any. I got some. Let me see it. Warren produces a Ziploc plastic bag carefully wrapped around a small amount of dark green marijuana. Dennis opens it and smells it. This is good. Where'd you get it? From Christian. Can we smoke it? I'm saving it. For what? Dennis takes the pot out of the bag and reaches for a record album. He starts to crumble the pot onto the album cover. Just half. Got up. Just half, man. Dennis looks at him and crumbles the rest of the pot onto the album. You got papers? You're a fucking asshole. Gets up. <laughs> Dennis laughs. There's some papers on the table. Give me one. Warren does not comply. Sharply. Hey, give me a rolling paper. Do you know how much money you owe me? Warren takes out a small wad of bills, peels off a few, and drops them on the bed. Where'd you get this? Why do you care? Well, if you're so rich, then you can get more pot from Christian tomorrow. So give me the fucking rolling papers before I beat the shit out of you. Warren goes to the table and throws a packet of club or zigzag rice papers to Dennis. What happened? Jasonius kicked you out? No, man, I left. You can't stay here. I, I don't want to stay here. Why'd he kick you out? What'd you do? Nothing. I got stoned and he comes home and he's like, this apartment smells like pot all the time. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm always smoking it. And he's like, I want that smell out of the house. And he's like, no, actually, I want you out of the house. And then he throws a few bills on the floor and it's like, there's some cash. Now pack up your shit and get out before I beat your fucking head. And I was like, whatever. So, I, uh, so he went on a date with his whore and I packed up my stuff and left. Where are you going to stay? I don't know. Maybe I'll stay with Christian. I don't know. Maybe I'll stay in a hotel. Who the hell knows? How the hell are you? How are you going to stay in a hotel? I got money. How much did he give you? He gave me some money. Why? Like, to thank you for leaving? I guess. How much is this? Putting the beautifully rolled joint in his mouth, Dennis counts the money Warren threw on the bed. 200? Dennis finishes counting. From under, under the mattress, he pulls a beat-up school composition notebook and flips through it till he finds Warren's name. Warren. Writing in the book. Cleared. With stolen funds. They're not stolen, man. He gave them to me. Dennis closes the book, finds a match, and lights up. Dennis holding in the smoke. <sighs> Where did Christian get this from? I don't know. Dennis slaps Warren in the face, playfully but hard. Don't fucking lie to me. Where'd he get it? Warren tries to hit Dennis back, but Dennis is much bigger and stronger and stops him. Don't fucking hit me. Where'd he get it from? Why, why don't you ask him? Did he get it from Philip? No. He said he got it from some fucking Rastafarian. That guy Wally? I don't know. That guy Cresco? I don't know. I don't keep track of what you guys where you guys perform your criminal activities. Who cares? Give me that. Dennis doesn't move. He keeps smoking. 
Warren reaches for the joint. Dennis allows him to take it. How much money did you steal? A lot. Let me see. Warren opens his backpack and takes out a felt shoe bag stuffed to bursting with cash. He loosens the ties and shows it to Dennis. That's a lot. It's $15,000. Are you fucking crazy? Give me half. No. Give me five. I'm not going to give you anything. No, give me five. We'll go to France and we'll mail the rest back to your dad with a note. Took five. Went to France. I'm keeping it. Are you kidding? He'll send large men after you with guns. He doesn't even know I have it. What do you mean? I, I'm... Where did I mean, you get it from? It was in his room. It was in his room? Yeah. Your father keeps $15,000 cash in his room? For what? Tips? I don't know. I guess he's got some kind of illicit lingerie deal in the works or something. I don't know. Your father is so heavy, man. Yeah, he threw me out. And when, and when I went to supper, I was just roaming around the house looking for listable objects. If that was going to be his, if that was going to be his attitude, so I go into his bedroom and there's this sinister-looking briefcase just sitting on the bed. So I jimmy and open the lock, and there's like rows and rows of cash just staring at me, like totally full of money. Jason. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, should I take this? This is some serious money. And then I'm like, fuck yeah, make him pay. So I take out the cash. Uh, and I fill up the briefcase with these old National Geographic and lock it up again. So I'll probably sit there for the weekend, and when he goes to deposit it or bribe whoever he was planning on bribing, he'll open it up, and hopefully he'll think, like, one of his cohorts was him off, or, like, his slut did it. No, he won't. Why not? Of course he won't. Why not? Because he's not a moron. Yes, he is. You really think after he throws you out the house, he's going to open his briefcase and find 20 copies of his own National Geographic's where his money should be, and he's not going to know that you did it? You're a fucking moron. Now get that shit out of here. I'm telling you. It's not Take it over to Christian's house and let your father's bodyguards break his fucking legs. He doesn't have any bodyguards. The guy who drives his car is not a bodyguard? No, he's a driver. That guy, sh like, shows me his gun every time I see him. Yeah, because he's insane. But my father is not a criminal. He's just in business with criminals. I don't give a shit what he is. I can't believe that you cart that kind of money across town and, like, bring it to my doorstep. No, no. I mean, you are so stupid. Stupid, man. You are so incredibly stupid. He kicks you out, so you steal $15,000 from him? I was pissed. Okay. Get it out of here. Take it to Christian's house. He's not home. Take it to Yaffe's house. Go to Leonard's house. I don't care. Nobody is home. Everyone's parents are home. I'm not allowed in their houses. Come on. I don't want to be wandering around the streets with all that money. Come on. This is so typical of you, man. I mean, this is like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the prototype moronic move we've all come to expect from your corner. You drive the guy crazy because you're such a sniveling little obnoxious punk. You grate on the guy until he finally throws you out, arguably the most dangerous lingerie manufacturer in the world, and then you steal his money and bring it to my house and expect me to, like, hide you or something? No, 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 no. This is why nobody likes you, man, because you're always provoking people. Okay, <laughs> now everybody's provoked, only you're the one they all fucking hate. Listen to me, I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. This is good for you. Oh, yeah? No, it is. It's good for you. Listen, you're a fucking idiot. You never have any money. Nobody can stand to have you around, and you can't get laid. I mean, man, you cannot get laid. You never get laid. Like, the last girlfriend you had was in, like, ninth grade, and it lasted for two weeks, and that bitch probably still hasn't recovered. She hasn't. I freaked her out. What? What kind of life do you lead? You live with your father, a psycho. He beats the shit out of you on, like, this regular basis. You habitually owe me hundreds of dollars. You never pay me until now, but we won't even discuss that. 
nobody can stand to have you around because you're such an annoying, loudmouth little creep. And now you're like, some kind of fugitive from justice? What is going to happen to you, man? What's going to happen to anybody? Who cares? Like, you're so independent. Yeah, because my parents pay for this apartment. They don't throw me out of it because they're so grateful I don't want to live with them because I don't goad them into making me dependent. I'm just like, don't send me to college. Just spring for my rent. I'll be a bike messenger till I decide what I want to do and we'll never have to deal with each other. And they're like, fine. Why do you say that shit? Because it's true. Why do you Because you deserve it. Lauren is close to tears. Are you crying now? No. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Well, for one thing, you should give me $5,000, and then you should go return that money. I'm not going to give you $5,000. I'm telling you, France. You want some money? No, I don't want any money. Warren opens the bag and pulls out two bricks of cash. Take some money. Go to fucking France. I don't want to go to France. Like I want your father stalking me for the rest of my life. Now put that shit back in the bag and take it back to wherever you found it. It scares me. Warren puts the money back and closes the ties. I can't return it because he's home right now. He's asleep. The shit is in his bedroom and he's going to be home all day tomorrow because he's having some associates over for brunch. Brunch. That's a wild concept. It's not breakfast and it's not lunch. It's brunch. Brunch. Let's serve brunch. It's something you serve. It's a strong pot. I know. All right. You know what you should tell your father? It doesn't matter what I do. He's going to kill me anyway, so what's the difference? No, no, let's figure this out. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. I'm a total mathematical genius. Now, how much of this cash did you spend? Not much. I paid you back. I took a cab. I ate sushi. 250 bucks. But he gave me 50. Okay, so don't spend any more. Hang out till Monday, then return it on Monday when he goes to work. If the briefcase is already gone, then just like leave the cashier in his bedroom with a note of explanation and like leave town. I don't know. Oh, that's a sound plan. And even if he still hasn't opened the briefcase, you're like home free, except for 200 bucks. Can I get the 200 back from you? Oh man, that's like paid. I can't release that cash. Where am I gonna stay? Stay with Christian. Why can't I stay here? Because I don't want you. It's just two days. I don't care. Now, come on, nothing's going to happen. He's not going to know I came here. He definitely won't know the briefcase. He definitely won't open the briefcase till Monday, and I'll be gone by then. You are so stupid, man. I mean, this definitely crowns your career as an idiot. Just let me stay here for Christ's sake. I do shit for you all the time. Like what? Like when your girlfriend kicked you out and you stayed at my house for two weeks. That was your father's house. Oh, what? This is my house. And I got in a lot of trouble for that too. I hang out with I hang out with you whenever you want. I play sports with you all the time. I buy pop from you. I take all your fucking abuse and I'm a good fucking friend. So why can't you help me out when I'm in trouble and not be such a fucking asshole? Because you're always in trouble. You have, like, no sense of differentiation. It's just two days. All right, all right, shut up. Thanks. But if your father shows up here, I'm giving you up immediately. I'm sure you will, but he's not gonna. What's up? What do you want to do? No, I don't want to do anything. Don't needle me, Warren. If you want to stay here, you can stay here, but you got to shut up. Dennis turns on the TV and watches it wholeheartedly. Hey, where's that chick Jessica? Jenny, have you seen that chick Jessica recently? No, what about her? I'm into her. <laughs> She's out of your league, man.
I think she likes me. No, she doesn't. I think she does. Shut up. She's really cute, man. She is cute. That's why it'll never happen. Warren wanders over to the fridge. There's, there's nothing in there. Warren opens the fridge and looks in. Get out of there, Warren. I just told you there's nothing in there. How come you never have any food in here? Dennis doesn't answer. He watches TV. Let's go play football. Dennis doesn't answer. Where's your girlfriend? We had a fight. Why? Because she's a cunt. Tell her to come over and bring that girl Jessica. Tell her yourself. Warren, going to the phone. Where, where's she at? You can't call her. We had a fight. Warren picks up Dennis's football and makes a phantom pass. Let's go outside and play. Forget it. Let's call your girlfriend and tell her to call that girl Jessica, and we'll take a few thousand bucks out of the shoe bag and really rent a really nice hotel suite and get a lot of champagne and shit and have a wild party. What do you think? Warren throws Dennis the football. Dennis throws it back. Dennis knows how to throw a football. You can't spend that money. I'll spend some of it. Big deal. Pass the football back and forth. Come on, I'll get beat. I'll get laid. It'll be good. Let's just get a couple of prostitutes. Okay. You want to? We can call this Japanese place Philip goes to, and they'll send over two, like, incredibly beautiful and obedient oriental hostesses to entertain and delight us. Let's do it. How much will you spend? I don't know. How much is it? Like 200 apiece? I'd be into that. What, do you tell, what will you tell your dad? Fuck my dad. I took his money. You robbed him! Warren throws a hard pass that goes wide, smashes into some breakable glass. Whoa, sorry. What is your problem? I lost control of the ball. Dennis gets the ball out of the smashed shelfware. Yo, Danny, toss it back! You broke my girlfriend's sculpture. Whoa, really? I'm sorry. What is your problem? I don't know. Oh, I really broke it? Yeah, you really broke it. Warren comes over and examines the broken clay sculpture. What was that? What was it? It was two girls making out. Oh, intense. Now it's like half of two girls. I'm really sorry, man. It was an accident. Piece of shit, anyway. Yo, let me see it. Maybe I can glue it back together. Get away from it. Let me see. Warren tries to get a hand on the broken sculpture. Dennis roughly blocks him out with his body and elbows. Go sit in the corner, Warren. You're a fucking menace. Look what you did. Let me repair it. Dennis can't do anything with it. He lets Warren look at it. No problem. You just get some crazy glue and glue it together. Do you have any? No, I don't have any crazy glue. I can fix it. Dennis wanders away from the shelves. I'm wasted. Whoop, see? Pop the two halves of the broken sculpture together so it looks whole. Just glue it like that and it'll be fine. You probably don't even need a clamp. Warren picks up the football and makes a phantom pass at Dennis. Yo, heads up! Yo, Danny, go! Go would you put that? Would you put that down? Go long! The fuck am I gonna go long? Yo, go out! Warren throws the football hard. A little out of Dennis's reach, and it smashes into a bunch of other stuff. What is with you, Warren? Come on, you had it! Dennis grabs the football, rears back, and wings a viciously hard pass at Warren's head. Warren ducks, and the football smashes into the sculpture again, totally demolishing it. Catch it, you moron! Don't duck! This is my house! You tried to kill me, man. What is the matter with you? I didn't do anything. Dennis stalks Warren, grabs him in a headlock, and flings him down on the floor. Get They're it? both half laughing. Get out of my house! Come on, man. I didn't do anything. Dennis rains open-handed blows down on Warren's head and body. Warren covers up. Dennis drops onto his gut, knee first. Warren groans in pain. Dennis gets up and looks at the wreckage. Look what you did. Oh, my stomach. Oh, forget this. He starts tossing the pieces of the sculpture, 
basketball style into the waste paper basket across the room. He's a good shot. Most of them go in. She's gonna freak out. The last piece goes into the waste paper basket. Dennis walks over to it and boots it to the wall. He goes to Warren, who is covering his head. You all right? Warren uncovers his head. Dennis slaps him in the face. Cut it out! That's for breaking her shit. You murdered my stomach. I'm restless. So do you want to call any Japanese hostess then? You couldn't handle it. You'd go limp and be depressed about it for like a year and a half. Let's call him. Shut up. It's $200 a piece. You want to spend that cash? No, man, I can't. What are you going to do about the 200 bucks? I don't know. I'll sell something. What? From like your little faggot memorabilia collection? Yeah. So why don't you ever sell any of that shit to me? You should let me call Adam Salk's brother, man. He makes a fortune buying and selling that shit. I pay you. You do not. Besides, paying you isn't life and death. Anyway, you make so much money off of us already. It's like completely ridiculous. Yeah, and I always smoke pot with you. All of you. All, my pot. All the time. Like hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth. So why shouldn't I make some money off of you? You fucking guys like gripe at me all the time. And I'm providing you schmucks with such a crucial service. Plus, I'm developing valuable entrepreneurial skills for my future. Plus, I'm like providing you with precious memories of your youth for when you're all fucking old. I'm like the basis of half your personality. All you do is imitate me. I turned you onto the Honeymooners, Frank Zappa, Ernst Lubitsch, Boxer Short, Sushi. I'm like a one-man youth culture for your pathetic assholes. You're gonna remember your youth as like a gray stone haze, punctuated by a series of beatings from your dad and like my jokes. God damn! You know how much pot I've thrown out the window for you guys in the middle of the night when you're wandering around the street like junkies looking for half a joint so you can go to sleep because you scraped all the resin out of your pipes? You bitch about the fact that along the way I turn a little profit. You should thank God you ever met me, you little fucking hero worshiping little fag. You are out of your mind, man. <laughs> Dennis laughs. Warren opens his big suitcase and starts removing the first items from the extensive collection of toys, memorabilia from the 1950s and 60s. Mint condition mid 60s Mattel toys, first release albums. A 1950s toaster, etc. Don't take that stuff out in here. Why not? I want to see what I can sell. No, no, no. Don't take that stuff out in my apartment. It depresses me. Why? Don't take out all that cutesy, kitschy, retro 60s bullshit out in my ap apartment. I don't want to look at it. I can get a couple hundred bucks for any of these albums. Let me see. Warren hands him an obscure early Frank Zappa album. Where'd you get this? From a buddy of mine in Seattle. This is an amazing album. Dennis looks through some of the stuff. What is this shit? What's with the little spacemen? You are weird, man. This is Major Matt Mason. Don't you remember him? No. They had these when we were little. Like, like they're really cool. And these... These are in really good condition. I could get like 150 or 200 bucks for this. Seriously? Yeah. So how do you always owe me money? Because I don't want to sell them. You are depressing, little man. Now put that shit away. Warren, holding it out to him. Look, he's got a little space helmet. The visor moves up and down. Get that shit away from me. The phone rings. Dennis answers on the second ring. Into the phone. Yeah? Because you're being a cunt! The line goes dead. Dennis hangs up and laughs. Suddenly energized. <laughs> you're intense, man. I'm the best. I don't let people freak me out. I freak them out. You're an amazing man. Hey, listen. Uh, that girl you like, what's her name? 
Jessica. She's friends with that other, other girl, Natalie. You know her? Yeah. Okay, check it out. That girl, Natalie, likes me, okay? Last summer when Valerie was in Sweden with her family, I was like making out with her all the time, but that's all she ever let me do. The last, I saw her last week and she was coming on to me all over the place. So look, new plan. We'll take a thousand bucks out of the shoe bag, cab it over the Phillips house, pick up an ounce of blow, call Natalie, tell her and Jessica to come over here. We'll get them wired. Oh, fuck Natalie. You do your best to fuck Jessica. Then tomorrow we make a few calls, sell the rest of the blow, turn a tidy little profit and return the whole 15 grand to your psychotic father intact on Monday. That's a great plan. How do you figure? Because we extract a quarter ounce for ourselves, throw back in a quarter ounce of cut, sell it for like 125 a gram, clear around 3,600 bucks, return the thousand dollar investment to the bag along with the 200 you already owe him, and you're still gonna end up making like $600. All right. Okay. Yeah. Dennis grabbing the phone. Okay. But like, what's the basic margin of profit? Like 1800 each. But, so, but if we're making 1800 each, how come I only end up with six? Dennis still holding the phone. You don't end up with six. You end up with 18. Minus the thousand you're investing and the 200 which you already owe. Plus a free eighth of blow, which you can snort or sell as you see fit. Get it? Not really, but whatever. What don't you get? I don't really get the whole thing. Dennis hangs up the phone. Look, we're buying a Z for a thousand dollars. No, I get that part. I mean, I just... Theoretically, we're making a joint investment, right? Yeah. Only in terms of the actual cash outlay, it's all coming from my area, right? So in a way, I'm the only actual investor. Yeah. So then why aren't I making all the money? Because it's my connect and my customers and I'm going to have the shit in my house. Yeah, but... What do you mean aren't you making all the money? I'm not saying I should, but you're saying we should split the profits from before. I put the $1,000, I put back the $1,000, and I'm saying, like, why aren't we doing it afterwards? Because it's my connect. I'm providing the connect. I'm providing the cash. So what? So I figure the odds be 50-50. You do, huh? Oh, all right. All right, whatever. But that's fucked up because I'm doing all the work and all you did was steal some money from your father, which you're going to be getting back in like 10 minutes. All right. So what do you want to do? I don't know. I just, I should definitely get some kind of service fee. So look, we'll split the 2,600 net, 1,300 each. And then you pay me 200 more for doing all the work, which leaves me with 15 and you with $1,100. Out of which you can pay your father back the $200 or not. Whatever you want, okay? I guess. Is that all right with you? Can I call him now? Yeah, call him up. Don't ever try to out-Jew me, little man. I'm twice the Jew you will ever be. I'm like a Jewish god. I'm like Julius Caesar. You're a fucking mental case, man. Way to take care of business, little Warren. Dennis pinches Warren very hard. Ow! Dennis dials the phone. Wait. Dennis to Warren. He's not there. Into the phone. Philly, Dennis, call me. I'm looking for some fun. He hangs up. Shit. The phone rings. He lets it ring twice, then picks up. Into the phone. Yeah? No. Because I don't know. Because I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. To Warren. Go into the bathroom. Come on. Go into the bathroom. Warren goes in the bathroom. Into the phone. 
I'm sorry, baby. I know I messed up. I know. As soon as I start arguing, I immediately snap into attack mode and I just become in, as insanely brutal as I possibly can. It's because of my fucking mother. All right, why don't you come over? Warren's here, but I'll get rid of him. Yeah? Oh, really? No, totally bring her. Warren's like in love with her. Would she be into that? What if we got some blow? She might. All right. See if she'll come over. I'll work on it. Hangs up. Hey! Warren comes out of the bathroom. What's up? Nothing. I got good news for you, so get your little boner ready, because my girlfriend's on her way over with your favorite teenage prostitute. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? She's with Jessica? Yeah. And they're coming over here? That's right, my little love machine. Excellent. Only I told him we'd get drugs, so shut up for a second and let me think. He picks up the phone and dials. Who are you calling? Dennis ignores him. Dennis into the phone. Stewie! Hey! What are you doing? <laughs> You're too much, man. You should have been like a Roman senator. <laughs> hey, let me ask you something. Have you seen this weed Christian's been selling? It's got like an olive colored, dark green, heavy scent with like a medium amount of fuzz. Very wet and sticky and like long oblong shaped little buds. Shaped like beef satay. Oh, you got some. Do you know where he got it? All right, let me ask you something else. Uh, do you know where Philip is? Yeah, have you seen it? How is it? Really? How much did you get? What's he asking? I did. He's not home. No, I just tried him, you fat fucking pig. He's not home. Why do you have to aggravate me all the time? What's up? So listen, Stewie, baby, if I can't get a hold of Philip in like 20, I'm coming over there and I'm taking an eighth off of you, all right? No, Stuart, I'm not buying it from you. I'm taking it at cost. I'll give you cash up front, whatever you paid Philip, and you can get more from him tomorrow. Yeah, as a favor? Because I'm asking you, that's why. Because I introduced you to him in the first place, you fucking globulous fuck. You wouldn't even know him if it wasn't for me. You'd still be dealing commercial pot outside some Long Island mall to a bunch of dyed blonde, great neck bimbets, you fat fucking asshole. I created you, Stewie, and I can destroy you just as easily. I don't care how many syphilis-ridden Dutch, backpack, Dutch backpackers are blowing you, man. Why do you always have to try to, like, have some mincing little bullshit advantage over me all the time? So you don't feel like such a fat, ugly man or something? No, no, because you're totally uncivilized. You have, like, no sense of protocol, like, whatsoever. All right, all right, I'll call you back. He hangs up. What's up? Nothing. He's sitting on his waterbed doing speed balls with some naked Dutch hitchhiker he picked up at the bus stop, and he wants to, like, dicker with me over the price of an eighth of Coke. Like, I can't go over to Phillips myself tomorrow and pick it up for less than what he paid. And, like, I even turned him on to tons of business and tons of my own customers just so he can be, like, holding on to some kind of cards with me or something. Plus, he's so stoned out of his mind to begin with, you can't understand the word he's saying anyway. So, what are we going to do? I don't know. We'll see if Philip calls back. And if he doesn't, we'll just have to deal with the fat man. Maybe we should just forget it. It's late anyway. I don't want to be laying up in bed grinding my teeth all night. Unless you want to stay up and watch a job puffing stuff at 5.30 in the morning. I can't watch that show, man. It freaks me out. All right. Should we get some heroin? Not too much, right? Let's do speedball. Shut up. Do you even know what a speedball is? <laughs> no. Yeah, I know what a speedball is. It's like half heroin, half cocaine, right? Yeah, but we can't give these girls speedballs. What are you, a maniac? Anyway, Valerie won't do heroin. You won't do heroin. So what are you talking about? I've done it. Yeah, once. You'd be throwing up all night. That, that'd be a good impression. Speedballs are sick, man. They get you so fucked up. You're like, 
really sorry. What'd you do it? Shut up. What's up? No, nothing's up. How can you sit in a room with somebody for hours with nothing going on and keep asking, what's up, every 10 minutes like something new happened all of a sudden that you didn't know about? I don't know. It's just an expression. Warren is walking around the room, picking things up and looking at them. So what's up? Where are they? They're coming. Take it easy. Get away from my shit. Warren keeps looking through Dennis's stuff. But do they know I'm here? Yeah, yeah, I told them you're here. I totally set it up for you. Just don't get weird and bizarre and start talking about your dead sister and you'll do fine. I'm not going to talk about anything. Yeah, just don't be like... You're really harsh, man. I'm harsh? Yeah. Why? You should Why? face that shit. I face it all the time. Well, why do you have to like her childhood? Why do you have like her childhood pictures up all over your room and like articles about her murder in your fucking drawer like 10 years after the fact? You're going to let that shit dominate your life? You got to like get on with it. I am getting on with it, man. That's why I have her pictures up so I can get on with it. She's fucking lucky she's dead anyway. He is not. Shut up. Dennis gets up and goes to his stereo and puts on a record. It's a slow song. For example, Any Way the Wind Blows, we heard him in the Jets. He holds out his arms and walks towards Warren, singing along to him loudly. Get away from me. Dennis keeps coming, looming over Warren, who tries to escape. Get away from me, man. Dennis falls on top of him, crushing him with his body, still singing. Get off me, man! <laughs> and his laughs, screams. Warren struggles to get out from under him. Dennis gives him a loud, wet kiss on the cheek and sits back. Warren pushes him over and sits up. Dennis flops onto his back. Warren walks around. I love Warren, man. He plays with me all day and all night for as long as I want, and he never complains. <laughs> he sits up, grabs the phone, and dials. Into the phone? Stewie, it's me. I'm coming over. What are you telling me? Okay, forget it. W what's up? Covering the phone. He'll only sell us an ounce for 1500 if you give him the cash up front. So I'm not doing that. I don't buy retail, but you can if you want. But I'm not paying this pork loin 1500 bucks for an ounce of blow. It's not worth my while. So what? Unless we just keep an eighth for ourselves instead of a quarter. That way you still make your 1100 and I make my 15. We'll just keep less blow for ourselves. Into the phone? Hold on a second! Covered the phone. So what do you want to do? I'd go for it. All right, I'm coming over. Get dressed. He hangs up and starts looking for his sneakers. So should we get some champagne or something? All right, but I'm not paying for that either. No one's asking you to. What do you want, like Dom Perignon? There is no other brand. How many should I get? One bottle, two? Let's get two. They're expensive. That's no problem. All right. So how much do you need? Give me fifteen hundred for the blow and like two hundred for the champagne. The champagne's not gonna cost two hundred dollars. Just give me enough to cover it. Or let's just forget the whole thing. I don't wanna do any coke. It's a terrible drug, it's for chums, it sucks. I'll fuck my girlfriend and go to sleep and you can sleep in the park. Pops. Warren goes to the shoe bag and starts counting the money. Dennis starts putting on his sneakers. So but should I come with you? Or like, what's the deal? No, you gotta let Valerie in. She threw a key down the trash chute. No, man. I don't wanna deal with your girlfriend. It's all right, we made up. Just stay here, I won't be long. Whatever. Dennis finishes tying his sneakers and looks at him. Warren looks more nervous with every passing second. See, this is no good. 
you're already like freaked out and nervous. Forget it. That girl's gonna smell it the minute she comes in. What is the matter with you? What do you mean? What are you like worried about what to say? Don't say anything. Just sit there and look handsome, you Greek god. She should be worried about you. You're a handsome guy. You're like an intelligent, fucking interesting guy. You don't have to do anything. Just don't get freaked out. We're going to break this stupefying, losing streak of yours wide open. Now give me the money. All right. This is 1700 All right. Dennis takes the money and shuffles him to his coat. So just let him up, and I'll be back in like 20. Cool. Be glad, man. She's really cute. She's got a great body. And maybe you can actually fuck her. I'm going to give it the old college try. <laughs> Warren locks the door after him, steps back into the room alone. He looks at himself in the mirror. He tries to make his appearance more casual, but it's a challenge. He untucks his shirt, musses his hair, etc. He finds the half-smoked joint, lights it, and takes one huge hit. He sits there without moving. The buzzer buzzes. He gets up and presses the intercom button. Hello? Jessica on the intercom. It's Jessica. Okay. Warren buzzes her in and moves away from the intercom. He checks his appearance one more time, then goes to the door and waits. There's a knock on the door. He waits for a second knock, then opens the door and steps back. You may enter. Enter Jessica Goldman. She's the same age as Warren, around 19. She wears effective makeup, big shoes, and a slightly pricey little dress that shows off her figure to good advantage. She's dressed up for the night, not down, and definitely looks a little out of place in Dennis's grunge palace. She's a very nervous girl whose self-taught method of coping with her nervousness consists of seeking out the nearest available oasis of self-assurance and entrenching herself there with a watchful defensiveness that sweeps away anything that might threaten to dislodge her, including her own chances of happiness and the opportunity of gaining a wider perspective on the world that might eventually make her less nervous to begin with. Despite her prickliness, she is basically friendly, definitely interested in Warren, and trying to make a good impression. Hi, Warren, how are you? I'm okay. He hesitates, then leans in to kiss her hello on the cheek. She is not expecting this, so it's a little physically embarrassing. Uh, where's Valerie? Oh, she went with Dennis. Uh, we ran into him downstairs, and they said I should just come up. She stands there, not sure where to go or what's appropriate. So, how you doing, Jessica? You're looking very automated tonight. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? And nothing. It's a fashion concept. What? Nothing. You want to come in? He steps into the room. So how long do you think they're going to be? I don't know. Maybe half an hour. What? What do you mean? Where do they have to go? East. Like, like East 50s? Um, okay. I don't mean to be paranoid. I just don't want to be the victim of some teenage matchmaking scheme. Noted. You know, if, I, if I'm going to get set up, I'm going to do it myself. Well, nobody's setting you up, so why don't you calm down? Oh, you can't see why I would think that? Uh, I, I don't know or care what you think, Jessica. I'm, I'm not, I'm just staying here because my dad threw me out of the house. But go home, it's fine with me. Okay, sorry. Comes in. You probably think I'm like a total bitch now, right? I, I, I don't think anything. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. He locks the door. And now, and now you're mine. No way! 
I'm kidding. Calm down. That is not funny at all. Noted. Jessica sits down and takes out her cigarettes and lighter. Is it okay if I smoke in here? Go ahead. It's not my house. Well, is there like an ashtray or something I can use? Oh, I'm sure there's one somewhere. He looks for an ashtray and finds one at the same time she finds an empty soda can. Here you go. Uh, no, it's okay. I can use this. Thanks, though. Warren puts down the ashtray and sits down across the room from her. She smokes. Long silence. So are you like a really big cigarette smoker? I guess so. How many cigarettes do you say you smoke in an average day? I don't know, like a pack and a half a day on like a really heavy smoking day. Maybe like half a pack a day if I'm in like the country. Yeah. I never got into the whole cigarette scene myself, but I hear great things about it. Well, but if you smoke pot all the time, it's much worse on your lungs than cigarettes. <laughs> I guess my lungs are pretty severely damaged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they are. So did those guys go to get, um, to get coke? That's the plan. I don't want to do very much. Well, we're getting like a lot. I'll do some. And we're getting some Dom Perignon to top it off. So it should be pretty good. Sounds good. So why'd your dad throw you out of the house? What did you do? We just had a slight Political dispute, it's no big deal. Are you staying here? Where are you going to sleep? I don't know. It, it wasn't like a really detailed plan. I was just planning to crash on the floor for a few days, so I figured out what I'm doing. What are you going to do? I don't know. I was thinking I'd buy a bus ticket and then head out west. I have a buddy who lives in Seattle, so I might just do that. I definitely want to get out of this pit. That's for sure. You mean New York? You don't like living here? What's the like? You go outside and it smells bad, you know? And I live in Central Park West. Well. I like the outdoors. I know, but. Last winter, I went to visit this buddy of mine who lives in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And we'd ski every day, you know? And the bus, uh, and bus tables at night. And when you get up in the morning and open the front door, it's like silent. You know, you go outside and it's like the mountain and snow, and nobody around for miles. And like the whole sky over your head, you know. So what the fuck am I doing, languishing on this trash heap? Intellectual stimulation? I'm not getting any. All I do is smoke pot. I can do that anywhere. I can bring that with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really take advantage of the city's facilities either. I mean, it just sort of seems like such a total waste. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But you're not planning on going to school at all? Didn't you go to school somewhere? something uh briefly so i it just wasn't happening where were you ohio where oberlin whatever you're like at fit right yeah i really like it there it's a little jappy for me but there's a lot of really great people there if you know where to look for them but it's kind of weird because I'm, I'm living at home, which is great. Like, my mom and I get along incredibly well. But a lot of my formerly closest friends are out of the city now. And sometimes I, I wonder, you know, if I should have. I don't know. Do you, are you, like, heavily into fashion development? 
yeah, I've been doing a lot of designing. I've always done it. It's, it's what I want to do. Well, my basic philosophy about clothes is that they should be comfortable and not look like too many people had to flavor their, over their creation. Then again, I'm not very fashion oriented. Yeah, but you know, you will be someday. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, but you will. I mean, your whole personality will be different. You think? Sure. What you're like now has nothing to do with what you're gonna be like. Like right now you're all like this rich little pot smoking burnout rebel, but 10 years from now, you're gonna be like a, a plastic surgeon reminiscing about how wild you used to be. <laughs> well, I don't wanna make any rash predictions at this point, but I seriously doubt I'm gonna go in for plastic surgery. <laughs> well, okay, whatever, but you'll definitely be a completely different person. You know, everything you think will be different. And the way you act and all your most passionately held beliefs are gonna be completely different. It's, it's really depressing. How do you figure? Because it just basically invalidates whoever you are right now. You know what I mean? Like it just makes your whole self at any given point in your life seem so completely dismissible. So it's like, what's the point? I, I don't really know about that. Well, it's true. Maybe so. But I, I don't really agree with it. Well, <laughs> I've thought about this a lot. So have I. I mean, look at who our president is now, if you don't believe me. I'm not sure I follow you, but I guess. No, like the classic example is all those kids from the 60s who were so righteous about changing the face of civilization. And then the minute they got older, they were all like, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just be a lawyer. I guess that's one interpretation. No, but it's totally true. And now, like, Ronald Reagan is president of the United States? I mean, how embarrassing is that? It's pretty embarrassing. Although I have to say, I definitely know some people who are still seriously into civic activities. Like, my mother does a fair amount of volunteer work for some like kind of grape picking civil liberties organization in California? Well, I know people who do that too, but I'm not talking about the last pathetic remnants of Upper West Side Jewish liberalism. I'm talking about the mainstream and it's such a joke. I mean, I, I definitely feel that evil has like triumphed in our time. So do I, but... I still don't know if I could really ascribe to all, uh, all that to the theory that people's personalities undergo some kind of fundamental alteration when they get older. Well, they do. And it's a big factor. I mean, they obviously do to a degree. Yeah. And things definitely happen to alter your general trajectory. Yeah, and no matter what happens... But I think I that... Basically, you get a set of characteristics, and they're pretty much just developed in different ways, like... But can I just... Like, like last year, uh, like, like the last year of high school, I suddenly realized that all these weird kids I grew up with were, like, well, on their way to becoming, like, really weird adults, and it was pretty scary, you know? Like, you see a crazy kid, and you realize he's never going to grow out of it. He's a fucked up crazy kid, and he's just going to be a fucked up crazy adult with, like, a ruined life. Are you done now? I'm done with that thought. Well, can I please say something? Go ahead. Thank you. I'm not saying anything about whether you're, quote, fucked up or not. I don't mean it as a moral issue. Neither do I. I just think that, I think that like well, personality components are like the protons and electrons. Like like in science, every molecule is made of the same basic components. Like the difference between hydrogen molecules and a calcium molecule is like one proton or something. Yeah, I mean that's wrong, but yeah. So my theory is that people's personalities are basically constructed the same way. None of them are exactly the same, but they're all made of the same thing. That's interesting. Thank you. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. 
that is unfortunate. I'm not talking about the chemical structure of your brain. I'm talking about, okay, it's like when you find an old letter that you wrote that you don't remember writing and it's got all these old thoughts and opinions in it that you don't remember having and it's written to somebody that you don't even remember having ever written a letter to. I've never found a letter like that. Okay, well, I have, like, a lot of them. And it just, it makes you realize that there's just these huge swaths of time in your life that didn't register at all. And, and that you might just as well have been dead during them for all the difference they make to you now. That seems like a fairly nihilistic viewpoint, Jessica. <laughs> well, I am so completely the opposite of nihilistic. It's amazing that anyone could even say that about me. Well, kinda... But we don't agree, so that's okay. You think whatever you're going to think, and I think what I think, and there's no way we're ever going to convince each other, so my suggestion is that we just stop it. All right. Hey, is there anything to drink in here? I've got this really bad taste in my mouth. I think there's some water. I can get it. That's all right. Chivalry's not dead. It just smells funny. <laughs> Uh, does not know how to respond to this. So she just looks at him. He gives up and goes to the fridge. Finds a juice jar full of cold water, pours some in a glass, and brings it to her. Thanks a lot. Takes the glass and drinks down the whole glass while Warren watches her. God, I was so thirsty. Warren sits down, this time right next to her on the bed. He's sitting next to her, but not looking at her. It's making them both very nervous. Long silence. Jessica gets up and goes to the wall of photographs. So who are all these photos of? Are you on this wall? Yeah, I'm represented. Follows her to the wall. She finds a photo with him in it. Oh, wow, is this you? Yep. God, what a little stoner. You look so different with long hair. Yeah, everybody went for the traditional post high school chop. Valerie says you just cut your hair when Dennis cut his hair. Well, you definitely look better with it short. That seems to be the general consensus, but it makes me want to like instantly have long hair. Jessica scans the photographs. Wow, what a great picture of Dennis. I mean, he definitely has some, a slight cleanliness problem, but if he didn't, he would be seriously gorgeous. You think? Oh my god, are you kidding? I guess. So his dad's like a really famous painter, right? I guess he's pretty famous. Wow. So is that like really hard for Dennis to deal with? I have no idea. When his father's really sick or something? Um, he's definitely having some pretty dire prostate problems. His mom is beautiful. It's an incredibly attractive family. What does she do? She's like a big city social worker administrator of some kind. She's always like installing swimming pools for the poor or something. Mm. What? Nothing. She runs these programs for the city government or something. She does. She designs social work programs for street kids and drug addicts and stuff like that. So she's a fucking psycho. Why do you say that? Just because she's a social worker? No. Because of her behavior. Why? What does she do? I don't know. She's just like really strident. She's like a bleeding heart dominatrix with like bleeding energy. heart. I, I don't know. Yeah. What are you like a big Republican or something? Not at all. I'm a total Democrat. I just so why do you say that about her? Because that's what she's like. I, I don't really care. Maybe she's really nice. I don't really want to get into an argument about it. No, it's just. My sister is a social worker, and I really... I didn't say <laughs> anything about your sister. I know you didn't. I just thought... I didn't even know you had a sister. 
but I know, but I just, I think it's like a really good thing to do with your life. And I, and I wasn't okay. attempting to vilify the entire social worker community. I know. I just admire people who dedicate themselves like that. And I just, I don't. So do I. I. What she does is fine. What she does is fine. It's just how she is. I just think it's totally brave to do that kind of work. Unless you're just. Uh, unless what? Unless you just have no sense of people. No, like. If your mission overrides your actual moral opinion, but forget it. It's not, it doesn't matter. All right. I certainly didn't mean to offend you. I'm not offended. A moment. Jessica looks at the stuff in Warren's open suitcase. Hey, what's this stuff? Uh, those are some of, just some of my belongings. Looking through? What are these? Just some fucking shit. What are these? Like antique toys or something? Uh, for the most part. These are really cool. You think? Yeah. They remind me of the stuff my cousins had when I was a little kid. I always wanted to play with their toys, and they were like, go play with dolls, you little bitch. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you. I love old toys. I have a fair amount of this kind of thing. Do you know how many toys I had? I mean, how much of the stuff I had when I was little that I wish I had now? Like, I think of some of those toys and I just look back on them with this, like, longing, you know? Definitely. It takes out the Major Matt Masons. Who are these guys? That's my Major Matt Mason collection. No Major Matt Mason? Fix your head. Come on, Major Matt Mason? We Like, when we were kids? He's the best. Check him out. He's like ready for a mission. I have a complete set. All in prime position. I can actually sell them for a lot of money, but I'm hanging on to them. It's really cool. Warren shows her his heavy-duty 1950s toaster. And this is my amazing toaster. Toaster amazing, I call it. Look at it. It's really something. She looks. Yeah. GE may, only made like a few hundred of this model in the 50s. And then we recalled them because they were exploding into people's kitchens at breakfast and burning down their homes. <laughs> he laughs, uh, Sobers. So only a few, uh, a few hundred actually exist. I got one from this dealer I know in Colorado. He had no idea what he was selling me. Huh. I have made toast with it, but nothing bad happened to me but I don't really use it too much because it really depreciates in value. But it's great to know I have one of the only ones in existence. So what's your favorite thing in this collection? Definitely my Wrigley Field opening day baseball cap my grandfather gave to me, no contest. What's that? Warren, taking out an ancient blue and white baseball cap. This is a real collector's item like an amazing collector had it. My mom's dad got it the first day at Wrigley's Field when he was totally like a little kid in 1914. That's kind of reads what's embroidered on the cap. Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs opening day. It's off the other side. True value. True value hardware, all right. Puts the hat on. Looks good, Jessica. Wow. I didn't know your family was from Chicago. They're not. Just my grandfather. He was actually really cool. Like when he was a young man, he was like fairly. He was like a fairly well-known aviator, you know, with like the fur-lined caps, with the ear flaps, and the whole bit. He actually set a couple of early endurance records in the 1920s. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. He was pretty interesting. Like, whenever he would meet one of my friends, I'd be like, Grandpa, this is my friend Neil. And my grandpa would be like, nice to meet you, Neil. Are you Jewish? And my friend Neil would be like, uh, yeah. And my grandpa would be like, Neil, in the year 1923, I was the greatest Jewish aviator in this country. That's because I was the only Jewish aviator in this country. You want to see a picture? 
<laughs> and then he would like break out these clippings with like these photos of himself in his fucking stop with camel and he carried with him like that he carried with him like all the time. It was pretty amusing. Is he still alive? Nah. Nah. Where does your mom live? Santa Barbara. God, so why don't you go stay with her? That's supposed to be pretty nice. I don't particularly want to live in California for one thing. Why not? Because of the people in it. Plus, my mom lives with her boyfriend. And and anyway, she's kind of freaked out generally. So it's like kind of a tough... So she's kind of like tough to be around for very long at one stretch. Did you... Didn't you have a sister that died or something? Uh, yeah, I did. So, I mean, is that, is that why you say your mom is freaked out? I would say it was definitely a prominent factor. What did your sister die of? Uh, she was murdered. Oh my God, is that true? No, it's just a little joke we have about it in the family. What? Yeah, it's true. I, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Like, is that true? I just meant, you know. Oh my god. Yeah. How did it happen? Wait, do you mind talking about it? Not really. Do you want any pot? <laughs> it no, no thanks. thanks. But you go ahead. Uh, that's all right. That's down the ridge. So what happened? That's so horrible. Um, nothing. She was living with this guy named Julian, and my parents were kind of freaked out that she was living with this guy because she was only 19 and he was much older. Not really my favorite topic. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Long silence. She is very embarrassed. He holds out the roach to her. Do you want any of this? He lights the roach and gives it to her. She takes a hit, doesn't get much, or coughs, but doesn't relight it or try again. The wild city. She looks at him thoughtfully. Are those your records? Uh, Are those your records? Yeah. These are my authentic first release 60s album, all in perfect condition. I've got the whole thing here. Early Mothers, Captain Beefheart, Herman's Hermits, everything. You want to hear a song? Sure. He puts on a high-velocity Frank Zappa song, for example, Mystery Roach from Zoo Motels. All right. Nods and starts dancing. Wake this dump up. Yes. All right. Warren starts dancing in his own separate space. He takes a few tentative steps towards her. Then she moves unambiguously to him, and they start dancing more or less together. Uh-huh. 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 She opens up her arms, and Warren steps into them. The music abruptly ends with a Zappa-esque confusion of sound and becomes something weird and impossible to dance to. Uh... I don't know. I guess you really can't dance to this next song too well. Well? Hold on. He hurries to the stereo and puts on a slow, romantic song. Oh, okay. Goes for the slow song. I get it. Of course. Okay. I'm game. He starts to take his hands. Oh, wait. He lets go. I got a hair in my mouth. She extracts the hair from her mouth, shakes it off of her finger, and puts her hands back up. They dance, not entirely gracelessly. I'm definitely into actual dancing. Yeah, I think our generation definitely missed out in the dancing department. Yeah. I guess, like, whoever the genius was who decided you didn't need steps should have come up with something else instead. 
<laughs> yeah, right? He dips her. Mm, check him out, Mr. Dip. He brings her back up again. You could be a really good dancer, Warren. <laughs> Thanks. So could you. If only society would give us a chance. <laughs> yeah, man. They dance. Listen. Yeah? I, I just gotta say, I find you incredibly attractive. Okay, relax, will you? But listen. Would you be morally offended if I kissed you for just a second? Well, I mean, what's the rush? No rush. I I just like to get rid of this knot in my stomach. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, whatever's expedient. Moving closer? No. No, it's just... Letting him? Yeah. Warren kisses her. She kisses back. It quickly turns into heavy teenage style making out. Jessica breaks away. They're going to walk in and I'm going to be really embarrassed. A yeah, me lie. too. Takes a few steps away and looks back at him sharply. They are coming back, right? Yeah. Okay, just checking. But I mean, do you like me, Warren, or what? Of course I do. Can't you tell? I don't know. Not really. Maybe you just want to mess around or something. Um, I do. And I like you. And I completely enjoy talking to you. Well, okay. Which would you prefer if you had to choose? That would depend on which one we'd already been doing more of. All right, never mind. Stupid question. I'm sorry. It's just I'm always getting drawn into these situations and then getting hurt really badly, so. Noted. Do you want to close your eyes for a second? Yes. Closes his eyes. Jessica crosses to him and kisses him until they are both sprawled inelegantly on Dennis's horrible mattress, feeling each other up and getting so worked up that Jessica pulls away. Not out of coquetry, but just to put on the brakes. Okay, I gotta take a break. Well, I mean, if you want to, we could go someplace else. What do you mean, like to your house or something? Uh, no, my house wouldn't work out too well right now. Well, we can't go to my house. Well, look, why don't we, uh, why don't we just go to the we rent the penthouse suite of the plaza and hang out and order room service and like watch the sun come up over the park. How can we do that? I happen to be extremely liquid at the moment. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. Well, what about Dennis and Valerie? I'll leave them a note or we can just tell them where we are and, and have them meet us there or we can hang out by ourselves. What do we feel like doing? Um. All right. Really? Sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All right. Let me just get some funding. Goes to the shoe bag and takes out a couple of bricks of cash. Oh my God. Is that money in there? I'm afraid so. Where did you get that? These are the proceeds from my unhappy childhood. The what? I'll tell you about it later. You ready? I'm ready. She slings her purse over her shoulder. Stops. Oh, shit. I should have called my mother. What for? I'm just supposed to call her if I'm going to be out after 1230. Isn't that waker? She doesn't care. She just goes back to sleep. Do you want to call her now? No, no. She's just going to freak out because I didn't call earlier. I don't know. I'll, I'll just deal with it later. As they head for the door. I don't know why the fuck she's always so worried about me. Born drugs. They go out. Act two. The next day. A little afternoon. 
On the little table is a small laboratory scale, a brown paper bag, an unopened jar of mannitol, a tablespoon, an upside down porcelain dinner plate, a nearly unfurled $10 bill, and a straight edged razor. Dennis is sprawled out asleep on his mattress in a crazy tangle of sheets, wearing only a t-shirt and a pair of boxer shorts. The buzzer buzzes. Dennis stirs but does not wake. The buzzer buzzes again. He sits up, then staggers to the intercom and passes, presses the talk button. What? Warren on the intercom. It's Warren. Dennis buzzes him in, unlocks the door and leaves it ajar, then collapses back onto the bed. Warren comes in, looking chipper, carries a small deli bag with a coffee in it. Hey. Where have you been? What happened to you? Nothing. I was with Jessica. You were with her this whole time? Pretty much. What time is it? Around noon. Dennis goes into the bathroom, leaving the door open. We hear him pee and flush the toilet. He comes out. So, did you get that D from Stewie? Yeah, it's great. Me and Valerie were doing lines with him in Brigida for like two and a half hours. Plus, he says the heroin he has is like really amazing too. Who's Brigida? The Dutch girl? Yeah, she was pretty cute. I don't understand how this guy gets girls, man. He is like a classically ugly man. He collapses on the bed again. Where's Valerie? Oh, Valerie. Uh, Valerie walked in here and took one look at the shards of her sculpture laying in the garbage and went completely insane. She was screaming at me so loud it literally hurt my ears. She was like, you're totally selfish. You do whatever you want. You never apologize to anyone. You have no idea how to deal with people and you're gonna die alone. <laughs> then she burst into tears and fled to her aunt's house in Connecticut. I totally blame you. Sorry about that, man. I don't give a shit. She's out of her mind. So, is this it? Yeah. Warren picks up a brown paper bag off the table and, and very carefully takes out of it a double-wrapped Ziploc baggie containing an ounce of cocaine. That's a lot of blow. Yeah. Now put it down before you break it. Warren puts down the bag of cocaine. So what happened with you and that girl? Nothing. I had a nice time. Did you fuck her? Uh, yeah, I did. You did? As in actual penetration? Basically. No, no, what, what do you mean basically? Did you or didn't you? No, I did. Well, that's amazing. I'm pretty pleased. Warren breaks the losing streak. Yeah. I kind of like her. She really likes to argue, but I'm into that. But where did you go? Her house? No, man. I took her to the fucking Vanderbilt Suite of the Plaza Hotel. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. You took her to the Plaza? Yeah, I got this really beautiful suite, and we just drank champagne and looked out over the park and made love on the balcony. It was pretty intense. You should have gone to the Pierre. Why do you say that? Because the plaza's a dump. My old man says it used to be amazing, but it's totally run down now and rancid now. And P the Pierre is just a much, much better hotel. You gotta stay at the Pierre or the Carlton or like the Carlisle. Well, I never stayed at any of them, but I definitely thought the plaza was pretty cool. So were you able to do anything with her or did you just like come immediately? I came pretty fast. Naturally. You only did it once? Well, I think she kind of freaked out a little bit afterward. What do you mean? What'd she do? Well, she didn't really freak out, but she definitely got pretty quiet. And I was like, what's the matter? We just had an amazing time together, and I really like you. And she was like, I don't even know you. And I was like, well, you know me now, but... I don't know if she agreed with that interpretation. 
Then it's process to the table and starts opening up the bag of cocaine to show Warren. Yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, a lot of times your average girl teen will bug out immediately following a swift and manly conquest. It's no big deal. You didn't do anything to her that she didn't do to you. Just call her up and, you know, take her to the zoo or something. Only, don't sit here and start getting depressed after you finally got laid with a completely good-looking girl for after a drought like the fucking Irish potato famine of 1848 because you are bringing me down. You should be totally proud of yourself and not get into a usual self-flagellating stew just because you came too fast and she freaked out afterwards. <laughs> Now, come here and take a look at the crystal formation on this rock. It's unbelievable. That's a big rock. It's a big rock. This baby alone would probably pay for your whole night at the plaza, you know? I doubt it. Why? How much did you spend? I haven't really tallied it up yet, but I guess it was about a thousand, a thousand bills all told. You spent a thousand dollars on that girl when she was totally ready to fuck you for free. I wasn't so sure, man. She seemed kind of skittish. So what? Now you're in the hole for 2,500 bucks? 27. What is the matter with you? How did you spend that much money? I'm not really sure. Oh, okay, you are out of control. You are like hell-bent for destruction, and I want nothing more to fucking do with it. I can't sell $2,700 worth of blow before tomorrow morning. Why not? Because it's totally impossible. I'll make the calls, but I can't speed the natural pace of the market. It's just not going to happen. Besides, your share of the profits only comes to $1,300 minus my service fee. And even if it didn't, I'm not letting you stay here all week with that money warrant because when your father finds out that you spent the money on drugs, he's going to think I'm in cahoots with you and then he's going to forgive you and kill me. No, he's not. Yes, he is. How could you spend another $1,000? It was surprisingly easy. All right, all right. That, that's it. Get on the phone. Call Christian. Tell him we need distribution help. Tell him you'll give him whatever he wants out of your half. And if he can't help us move all 20 grams by tonight, you're coming over there to stay with him. Because I'm officially closing the Dennis Ziegler home for runaway boys. You understand me? Who am I calling? Christian? Yeah, Christian. All right. And Lauren picks up the phone. Dennis roams around the room. Oh, you are so stupid, man. You are so stupid. If your father finds you here, man, he's going to sick that fucking driver on me, and I'm totally going to have to leave town. And this is such a bad time for me. Lauren, holding the phone. Did you have breakfast yet? No, I didn't have breakfast. I just got up. Let's take a moment over to the bar and to bars and pick up a small salmon. Dial the phone. Warren dials the phone. Warren in Hello? Uh, Mr. Berkman, is Christian there? Oh, okay. Could you please tell him that Warren Straub called? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Not too much. How's Mrs. Berkman? Get off the phone. Warren into the phone. Anyway, could you tell him that I called? And you can call me at Dennis Ziegler's house. Dennis makes a Dennis. wild negative cutoff gesture. I actually, just tell him I'll try him later. Thanks a lot. Hangs up. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Why don't you calm down? Oh, you are really asking for it. Maybe I can get a hold of Philip. The phone rings. They look at it fearfully. It keeps ringing. Dennis picks it up tentatively. Into the phone. Yeah. Because I didn't break your fucking sculpture! Warren broke it! He slams the phone down as hard as he possibly can. Runs his raging fingers through his hair. Warren starts to speak. Dennis grabs the phone and dials furiously. Waits. Into the phone. I just want you to think about what a sick, unhappy person you are that after all the serious problems you've been having for the last three months over your relentless identity crisis, which has nothing to fucking do with me, you're finally getting along together like we fucking love each other and you freak out at me this much and get me this angry at you because one of my friends accidentally broke your semi-lesbian progressive school play sculpture. 
It was on the shelf so I could look at it. Will you listen to yourself? Will you listen to what you're saying? You torture me about a sculpture, you psychotic monster. I'd like to rip your fucking head off. He slams the phone down and kicks it as hard as he can across the room. Pause. You have a nice touch, man. Shut up. He starts laughing. <laughs> I'm sick. Sick. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Christian's not home, and I ain't calling Philip. What about this shit? Could you sell any of this? He rattles more. Uh, yeah, I can sell all of it. Really? For how much? Could you get $2,000 for what's in here? I don't know. I never really tallied it up, but I'm fairly sure I could get considerably more than that. Oh, we are selling this today. I'm calling Adam Salk's brother right now. He picks up the phone. Stop. Is that okay? Go ahead. Yeah, styles the phone. All right, maybe this will solve everything. Is that Donald? Dennis Ziegler, man, what's going on? I'm all right, listen, uh, do you know Warren Straub? Yeah, so he's got like a lot of really high quality toys and shit from like the 50s and 60s and about 30 really rare first release albums. Over the phone to Warren, who is signaling him. What? I think you should mention the toaster. No, he doesn't care about your toaster, man. One second, man. He does. It's really rare. It's worth money? Yeah. Sorry, man. He's also got this in incredibly rare toaster from, like, 1847. 1955. From 1955. Uh, like, a completely rare edition of toaster. I'm like, not like sure totally what the actual it. model is, but I said I, I'm, I'm not sure what the actual... It. I'm not sure what the actual model is, but I definitely know it is one fine. Please tell them they recalled it. Will you shut up? Yeah, man. Uh, anyway, uh, he was going to sell some of this shit to his regular boy, but I told him I had a friend who could probably come up with a much better price. And I wanted to try to give you the business if you were interested. But the thing is, Donald, Donald, this stuff is like really good. So I don't want to waste my time if you're not totally prepared to step up to the plate. You know what I mean there, Donald? Yeah? All right. No, this afternoon's not so good for me, man. I'm going to a ball game with my brother. No, man. Warren's, like, ready to go. Well, what are you doing right now? All right, give me your address. Write down the address. All right, man. I'll see you in a few. Thanks, so. I am a total business genius. I don't even know what this shit is worth, and I'm already getting you, like, the best possible price for this. I am just, like, completely naturally gifted at business. Well, there's my usual guy who's definitely offered me decent money for the whole collection at various times, so... No, no, never mind your usual guy. You should totally let me handle this transaction for you, Warren, because this guy is, like, completely completely intimidated by me and I'm just gonna get you more money all right whatever all right now before I go over there now before I go over there tell me what would be the best possible money you could possibly get for this shit I don't know if you include the records I guess the best price you can hope for would be like I don't know like maybe 25 at the very outside <laughs> You're seriously telling me this junk is worth 2,500 bucks? Yeah, because it's a really good collection. But you probably won't get that. All right. Now listen, Warren, I am not selling you baby toys if you don't tell me it's okay. Because I don't want you guilting it over my head for the rest of my life, okay? But if you don't want me to, I am totally throwing you out of here right now because I have no desire to incur the wrath of Jason. And you can't just walk in here and dump your situation on me and then obstruct every possible solution I come up with just because you're a destructive little freak who has to, like, wreck everything so you can get everybody whipped into a frenzy over you all the time. I don't want you telling me later that I forced you into selling your precious belongings because it's totally up to you, all right? No, go ahead and sell them. I don't know what else to do. Then it starts getting dressed. All right. If this stuff is worth 25 bills, then I probably won't have to sell 
all of it. So tell me which I should try to hang on to and which I should immediately toss into the gaping maw of Dennis Salk, Donald Salk. I, I guess save the major Matt Basins for last. And if you can, I guess I'd prefer if you didn't sell the toaster. I just totally humiliated myself taking up this fucking toaster and now you're telling me I can't sell it? No, if you don't have to, no. I don't know how much he's going to offer. All right, all right, I'll try. Give me the hat. Yeah, it picks up the baseball cap. We can't sell this? I don't think so. Why not? You could get money for this, couldn't you? I know I could, but I'm not selling it. All right. Then skips more in the baseball cap and starts packing up the suitcase. The buzzer buzzes. It's Jason. Not Jason. It's totally Jason. I'm going across the roof. Not Jason. He doesn't even know I'm here. He knows who your friends are. You think he didn't figure out where you went? But it's not him, you, you, you fucking You only have two friends. friends. throwing a bunch. All right. You answer it. No way. Why not? Because it's not my house, man. No what? I don't want to answer it. What if it's him? All right. All right. Shut up. I wasn't talking. Shut up. Dennis goes to the intercom and hits the talk button. Yeah? Jessica on the intercom. It's Jessica Goldman. Uh, is Warren there? I'm going to kill you, Warren. I didn't know she was coming here. That scared the shit out of me. Why? Just buzz her in. Dennis hits the buzzer and goes to the suitcase. All right, Salk's only on 81st, so I won't be long. I'll do my best and try to save Major Mad Mason if I can. But he might be called upon to make the ultimate out of space sacrifice. I understand, man. Farewell, Toaster Amazing. Warren unhappily watches Dennis pack away the last of the collection and zip up the suitcase. All right. Cheer up, man. Your troubles are almost over. I'm cheerful. Knock at the door. Dennis is nearest the door and opens it. Jessica stands in the doorway. Hi, Dennis. How are you? I'm fine, Jessica. How are you? Fine. Are you from the leg embassy? He's referring to me. Yeah, I'm the ambassador. Stay with it. Comes into the room to Warren. Hey, uh, I was just around the corner, so I thought I'd buzz up. Darling, Jessica. Good morning to all Norsemen. Excuse me? Uh, how many Norse horsemen does it take to smoke a herring? Dennis laughs rudely and loudly at Warren's <laughs> awkward attempts at eccentric humor and goes into the bathroom, closing the door behind him. We hear the sink running. Warren crosses with awkward confidence towards Jessica. All Norse horsemen smoke Morgan cigarettes. Am I supposed to know what you're talking about? I'm not talking about anything. It's just something to say. Do you want to kiss me good Morgan? Comes to her to kiss her. It doesn't go too well. She turns her face or ducks her head or whatever, so you can't kiss her. Low, referring to Dennis in the bathroom. Um, can we please not, like... Sorry. That's okay. Moves away from him. Dennis comes out of her bathroom, out of the bathroom. Sits on the floor to put on his sneakers. So, Dee, how long are you going to be? Uh, I don't know. How much time do you need? Uh, you were going to get some food. How much time do we need? So who's stopping you? I was actually wondering about the key. How much time do we need for what? For whatever dastardly deed you're planning to indulge in, Jessica. I don't think we're going to be indulging in anything very dastardly, to tell you the truth, Dennis. I thought we were going to be indulging in some brunch. So that's your story, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. What is he talking about? Denny, man, you're my best friend. 
All right, kids, I'm out of here. Try to find some way to entertain yourselves. Don't leave on my account. Don't worry about it. I'll be back in half. Sounds like it's with the suitcase. Where is he going? He just has a business transaction to perform. <laughs> what is he, like the big drug dealer or something? He's the big everything. <laughs> well, sorry to bust in on you like this. That's okay. But I actually just wanted to tell you that I can't have brunch. Why not? Well, when I got home this morning, I got into this really huge fight with my mom, and I think I'd better just be at home today. She, she's kind of freaked out that I never called last night, so now she wants to have some big landmark discussion about how we're going to handle my living there this year. Well... Thanks for canceling in person. Well, I'm sorry, but my mom's really upset and getting along with her is a really big priority for me right now. I tried to call before, but the line was busy. Do you want to make a plan for any time this week? I think I'd, I'd better just chill out for a little bit this week, actually. All right. Well, you seem like you're really angry. I'm not. Well, that's not the impression that you're conveying, but... No. I guess I just don't understand why you walk 10 blocks out of your way so you could be around... Uh, uh, I, no, I guess I just don't understand why you walk 10 blocks out of your way so you could be around the corner so you could buzz up and tell me you can't have brunch with me. Uh, no, I told you, I tried to call. Yeah, he was on the phone for like two minutes. All right, I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. All right. She goes slowly to the door and puts her hand on the knob. So, can I ask you something? Go ahead. Did you tell Dennis what happened last night? Uh, I guess. Really? What did you say? Nothing. I said we had a nice time. That's all? Pretty much. I find that really hard to believe. Why? I don't know. Don't you guys get into, like, comparing notes or so and stuff? N not really into that. Well, okay, it's just... This is getting a little weird now because when I talked to Valerie, she asked me if anything happened with us last night. And for some reason, I guess I didn't really tell her that anything did. So now she's going to talk to Dennis and I'm going to look like a total liar to someone I'm just starting to be close friends with and who I really care about. Um, so I don't really get, you're mad at me because you lied to Valerie? No, I just, I just should have figured that you would like rush off to tell your friends that you fucked me. Whoa. Whereas I might be more inclined to be a little more discreet about it till I found out where I stood with you. I didn't fucking rush off anywhere. Yeah, you know what? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I, I, I came back here because I'm staying here. Okay, but you know what? It really doesn't matter. And the minute I walked through the door, he like totally grilled me. Oh, so you just tell him anything he wants to know, no matter what the consequences are for somebody else? No, we let me finish my... But honestly, Warren, no. I don't really care who told, who you told or what you told them, because people are going to think whatever they think. And you know what? There's nothing I can do about it. What people? What are you talking about? I don't know, but whatever it is, I must be wrong because of the way that you're yelling. You're not anything. Well, I... I should just really listen to my instincts. You know, because your instincts are never wrong, and it was totally against my instincts to come over here last night, and it was definitely against my instincts to sleep with you, but I did, and it's too late, and now my mom is totally furious at me, I probably ruined my friendship with Valerie, and now, like, Dennis Ziegler thinks I'm, like, easy pickings or something. Nobody thinks anything. And it's not like I even care what he thinks, okay, because I don't actually know him, or you, or Valerie, for that matter, so... It doesn't really matter. 
I've made new friends before. I can make new friends now if I have to. So let's just forget the whole thing ever happened. You can chalk one up in your book or whatever. I don't have a book. And I'll just know better next time. Hopefully. Okay? I don't really get what you're so upset about. Well, I guess I'm just insane. I, I thought we had a really good time together, and I was actually in a fairly up state of mind for once. Sure you were. Well, I didn't mean that in any kind of lascivious way, so I don't know why you want to take it like that. I really like you. Yeah, whatever. No, not whatever. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I said anything to Dennis. I definitely caved into the peer pressure. But I also definitely said as little as possible and was totally respectful of you in the, way I t in the way I talked about you. Even though I was pretty excited about what happened last night and also about like maybe like the prospect of like, I don't know, like going out with you, which I would be very into if you were. But if you want to think the whole thing meant nothing to me, then go ahead because that's not the case. Well, you know, I really... I, it's totally weird because like taking off all your clothes and having sex with someone you barely know and then being like what's up now you know it's like it's like such an intense experience but nobody knows what to fucking say even though nothing bad actually happened you know well I don't know but I really like you I, I don't really ag <laughs> I don't really agree with most of your opinions oh no. Thank you. But I don't meet a lot of people that actually make me think, you know? And who can hold their own in an interesting discussion. And who I'm totally hot for at the same time, you know? It's a fairly effective combination. I don't know, Warren. Things are just really weird in my life right now. And, and everything you're saying is really sweet, but but I have literally no idea if you mean it or not. And it's like my instinct is just broken. And I guess actions speak louder than words. But action, but what action could I possibly take except to say that I'm sorry for whatever it is you think I've done? Presents are always nice. I'm just kidding. You want a present? No, I'm just kidding. Why? I'm sitting on $12,000. I'll buy you a sports car, okay? That's okay. I don't even have a license yet. What do you, what do you want? Are you serious? Name it. Okay. Pause. She looks around the room. Her eyes light on the baseball cap. Um, could I have the hat? Definitely. Really? It's yours. Picks up the baseball cap and holds it out to her. Here. Looks at him uncertainly. Don't, if you don't want to. I really want to. Why? Because I really like you. Reaches out slowly and takes the hat. Well, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe that you would give me something that means this much to you. I, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Good. Puts it on her head and self-consciously models it for him. What do you think? Looks great on you. You think? Definitely. He looks at him. He is clearly in distress and can't hide it. Well, you look totally miserable. I'm not. Taking off the hat. Well, I'm sorry, but I feel really weird taking your grandfather's hat. Then why did you fucking ask me for it? The flush is a deep, mortified red. I was totally kidding when I no, asked you, you for weren't. something. Yes, I was, and then you insisted I pick something. Only why did you give it to me if you didn't want me to have it? 
because I really want you to have it. But why do you keep saying that when you obviously don't? No. God damn. What do I have to do? Beg you to take it from me? Okay. Sorry. The hat back on her head. I mean, should I just go home? I, I don't know. Do whatever. Well, then I guess I will. Goes to the door. Should I assume you no longer want to go out this week? I don't think we can. I'm all out of baseball hat. Off the hat. Can I please say something? You try to give me that hat back one more time, I swear to God, I'll fucking burn it. That puts the baseball cap down on the table. Well, that would be up to you. Turns and exits. Warren stands very still for a minute. Then he gets up and carefully puts the hat with his stuff. He sits at the table and very carefully dumps all the cocaine on the dinner plate and looks at it. He spoons some mannitol onto the plate and starts mi mixing the two powders together, concentrating intensely. The phone rings. He reaches for it and knocks the entire plate of cocaine onto the floor. He doesn't know what to do for a minute. He laughs. The phone keeps ringing. <laughs> Hello? Stands up like he just got an electric shock. He listens for well, a moment. Dad? Guess the jig is up. What could I... No, I was planning on returning it. Thank you. Well, you're actually going to have to wait like an hour. Do whatever you want, but... Do whatever you want, but I won't be here. Why don't you punch, punch me in the face and throw me out of the apartment? That is definitely my intention. Uh-huh. I don't know, Dad. What kind of world do you think I'm living in? Yeah. I think about her all the time. I don't really know, Dad. I just... See her in my imagination, I guess. I feel pretty, feel pretty strongly about the fact that I have a lot better judgment than she did at my age. And it's also not too likely that I'm going to move in with some 35-year-old guy who beats me up all the time. So I don't really think it's an appropriate comparison. Although I will say that it's a totally obvious one. Which, I mean, I don't think it's all that clever. All right. I know your brunching companion's awake. Well, is it really hard to fully appreciate what your girlfriend has to go through? But it, it's really fucking fortunate that she has both good looks and the intelligence to see her through all the rough spots. Sounds good. Do whatever you want. I hate you too. Father hangs up. Warren hangs up too. He looks at the cocaine on the floor. He starts to scrape what he can off the floor and onto the plate. But it's an impossible job. He suddenly stomps on the cocaine, smearing it all over the floor with wild kicks. After a moment of this, he stops. Dennis comes in very freaked out. He puts down the suitcase, now empty. What are you doing? What happened? I knocked the drugs on the floor. You did what? I was trying to mix in the cut. What? How bad is it? It's pretty bad. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Oh, I can't even deal with this right. Listen, listen to me, Warren. Something terrible has happened. What's the matter? Somebody's dead? Yeah. Who, my mother? No, not your mother, you idiot. Okay. It's Stewie. Who? Stewie, Stewie, it's fucking Stewie.
Stewie who? Stewart, the, the fat man. Stewart Grossbart. What's the matter with you? Oh, shit. That's Stewie? Yeah, that's Stewie. How many fucking Stewies do you know? All right. I couldn't, I, I couldn't place the name for a second. What happened to him? I don't know, man. I guess he did too many speed balls. He was with that Dutch chick all night, and they went to sleep. And she woke him up this morning. She couldn't wake him up, so she turned him over. And there was blood coming out of his nose and his eyes, and he was dead. Whoa. I mean, I just saw the guy last night. I am so freaked out. I can't even believe it. How did you find out about it? Because when I got to Donald Salk's house, he was on the phone with Yoffy. So I got on the phone, and Yoffy told me he went over the stories this morning, and there was all these cops there, and the girl was sitting there freaked out of her mind, crying and screaming and smoking cigarettes and, like, take, talking half in English and half in Dutch. And Yoffy told the cops he was Stewie's friend, and they told him what happened. Stewie. So, so I guess it's a good thing we didn't do any speedballs, you know? But did we buy that shit or what? I don't think so. I was doing it all night, and I didn't wake up with fucking blood coming out of my nose. Did you? No, but I didn't do any of it yet. And the girl was okay, so I guess he just overdid it. But I, oh, I'm so freaked out. I mean, the guy's dead. You know what that means? It, it's like he's not going to be around anymore, like, at all. And it just really got me fucking scared. I mean, we are such assholes to be doing all this shit, man. I'm totally stopping. I know he was a big fat slob who totally overdid everything, and all he ever ate was like sirloin drenched in butter and sour cream. But the guy was like 23 years old, and now he's just gone, you know? Like, he's no more. Yeah. I don't know, man. I guess this, there's only a certain amount of time you can keep doing this shit before the shit starts to happen to you. I mean, I'm really scared. Did you sell my stuff? Yeah. How much did you get for it? I only got 900. What do you mean? I mean, you had a totally inflated idea of what this shit was worth. So don't even try to make me feel bad about it. I know exactly what it was worth. And that guy whooped you. I am really going to hit, fucking hit you, man. I totally got you the best possible deal I could. Then you shouldn't have sold it. You told me to sell it. At least I didn't knock the fucking coke on the floor. So don't try to make me feel bad about all this, man. All right? I'm freaked out of my mind. So maybe I didn't do so well. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's better than nothing. I guess. What happened to that girl? She left. You already had a fight with her? I'm not really sure what happened. But you messed that up so fast. What kind of talent for misery do you have, man? I don't know. I guess I'm pretty advanced. Did my girlfriend call back? No. I think I went too far with her before. Well, I can't even deal with it right now. I'm just too freaked out. Then it's down on his back. I just can't believe this, man. It's like so completely bizarre. Not like I even liked the guy that much, you know? I just knew him, you know? But if we had been doing those speedballs last night, we could both be dead right now. Do you understand how close that is? I mean, it's... Death. Death. It's so incredibly heavy. It's like so much heavier than the 95% of the shit you deal with in the average day that constitutes your supposed life. And it's like so totally off to the side. It's like ridiculous. I mean, that was it. That was his life. Period. The life of Stuart. A fat Jew from Long Island with a grotesque accent who sold drugs and ate steak and did nothing of note like whatsoever. No, man. I'm like high on fear. I, I'm totally high on fear. I'm like, I don't even know what to do with myself. I want to like go to cooking school in Florida or get into show business. I could like so totally be a completely great chef. It's like ridiculous. Or like an actor, a director. I should totally direct movies, man. I'd be a genius at it. Like if you take the average person with an average sensibility or sense of humor or the way they look at the world and what thoughts they have and what they think and you compare it to the way that I look at this shit and the shit I come up with to say or just a slant I could put on shit, there's like no comparison at all. I could totally make movies, man. I would be like one of the greatest movie makers of all time. Plus, I am like so much better at sports than anyone I know except Wally and those big black basketball players, man. But I totally played with those guys and completely earned their respect. And Wally was like, Denny, man, you are the only white friend I have who can take uptown and hang out with my friends and not be embarrassed. 
because I just go up there and hang with them and like get to know them, get, get them so much, much more stoned than they've ever been in their life. And I'm completely not intimidated by that at all, you know? Yeah. Oh, I'm high on fear, man. I'm like completely stoned out of my mind on fear. And not like you guys think I'm totally confident and on top of it, but it's not true at all. My fucking mother is so fucking harsh and wildly extreme that I just got trained to snap back twice as hard as the minute anybody starts to fuck with me. That's how I fight with Valerie. Like the minute we get into an argument with her, with in an argument, she says to me, and I just double it. I totally get in her face, and she until she backs down or like has to leave the room, and it completely works because I don't have to take any of the shit I see all my male friends taking from their fucking girlfriends, or like the shit my father takes from my mother. I mean, all he does is fucking lord it over everyone, man, over my brothers and sisters, and all like his fucking assistants and his dealers and agents, and like all these fucking celebrities who buy his art because he totally knows he's like a complete living genius. And he's so like, why would I spend two minutes talking to anybody I don't want to? Except he's like torturing everyone constantly because he never has to, never doesn't have to pee. And my mother is freaking out because she's working 14 hours a day because they cut the money out of her programs and she's totally predicting major inner city catastrophe in years to come. And she completely has his balls in a vice. She's like, Eddie, you were an asshole. Eddie, no one gives a shit if you have to pee. You always have to pee, so shut up. She just tramples him, man. She's like, no matter what you do, it doesn't matter because all you do is sell a bunch of paintings to like 1% of the population. And I'm out there every day saving children's lives and trying to help real people who are being destroyed by Ronald Reagan. So whatever you do and how famous you are, it's just a total tissue of conceit because it's got nothing to do with anybody but rich people. She just makes total emasculated mincemeat out of him some sometime and the only thing he can do to fight back is go fuck some 20 year old groupie only now he can't do that anymore because he's so sick she's just totally in her power and all he can do is torture her from the totally weaker position and she's like laughing in his face my family is sick man they're sick <sighs> you think your fucking father is crazy what if like he went after total strangers like worship what if everywhere he went like total strangers worship him as a god wait till his health starts to go can you imagine what that's like? Like seriously, what does that feel like? To be looking ahead five years and not knowing whether you're still gonna be here. You can totally see why people are religious, man. I mean, how much better would it be to think like you gotta be somewhere, you know? Instead of fucking nowhere, like gone forever. It's so fucking scary. I'm so fucking scared right now. I gotta call my girlfriend. You have me totally fucked up, by the way. How emblematic of your personality is it that you walk into a room for 10 minutes and break the exact item calculated to wreak the maximum possible amount of havoc, no matter where you are? You're a total troublemaker, Warren. I should totally ban you from my house. I am so creed up. I can't shut up. I wish Valerie was here. Maybe I should call that girl Natalie and see if she'll come over and give me a blowjob. She really likes me, man. I, she told my sister I had beautiful eyes. I do have totally amazing eyes. They're like a completely amazing, unique shape. Like most people with my kind of eyes aren't shaped like this at all. My eyes are like totally intense and direct. Like if I, if I look people in the eye, like nine out of 10 people can't even hold my gaze. Did you do any of that coke? Not yet. I don't even want to look at it, man. I'm so freaked out. I feel like donating it to charity or something. <laughs> that is so not funny. I wonder if anybody told his family. I'm sure they did. I wonder if they'll have a funeral. I'm sure they will. That's going to be one big casket. I wonder if anybody will show up. Why wouldn't they? Nobody liked the guy. I called six people and I was like so freaked out and nobody cared at all. They were all like, wow, that's amazing. Is the coke all right? I don't, don't know if that means whether they're all just totally callous and unfeeling, whether the guy was just a totally reprehensible human being. Well, he didn't really leave me with a lastingly warm impression. I mean, I'm sorry he's dead, but I read the newspaper this morning too, you know? Well, all I know is if I had a fucking funeral, there wouldn't be room to sit. Someday I'm going to make a movie about all of us, man. Like, if you made that guy Donald Salk a character in a movie with all that shit in his apartment, how heavy would that be? And most people would, like, find some bad actor to do some caricature sitcom imitation of this guy and, like, totally miss all the intense subtleties and qualities of his personality. And if it was me, I would just go in there and use the real guy. It would be so much heavier and also so much funnier, don't you think? I don't know. 
But don't you think I would be like an amazing director? I have no idea, man. What do you mean you have no idea? I mean, I have no idea. Well, I totally would be. I would totally... But you've never done it. What do you mean? I mean, you've never done it. You don't know anything about it. You just like movies. And you have an interest in people's personalities. No, I don't just like movies. I totally... I like them too. But I don't necessarily think you'd be a good movie director because I have no idea if you have the slightest talent for it whatsoever. I'm sorry. You're really pissing me off. I don't give a shit, man. Why did you sell my fucking toy collection for $900? Is that what you're mad about? With poor Stewie moldering in the ground? I don't give a fuck about Stewie, and neither do you. I don't even know him. So call the guy up and get it back and dig your own fucking grave, you little asshole. I'm so totally sick of you and your moronic fucking self-imposed dilemma. I've been dealing drugs for five years and never once dropped any of it on the fucking floor because I am not an imbecile. I cannot believe that you do that and that you have the nerve to give me shit because I undersold your little toy box. Why do you have to talk to me that way, man? Why do I have to talk to you what way? Why do you have to call me an asshole like every five seconds? I don't like it. What do you mean? We call each other shit all the time. Don't start with me, Warren, because I've been doing this, because all I've been doing for the last two days is like totally try to help you. I know you're doing something, man, but I can barely tell if you're even on my side. What are you talking about? I'm on your side. I'm totally on your side. Then why are you always like, Reminding me that I haven't done it with girls in like a really long time, man. Because? And like constantly insulting me and like teasing me and like telling me how incompetent I am and what a fuck up I am. Like this running motif of like every time we hang out. Because you are a fuck up. So am I. So is everyone that we know. What's the big deal? And how come every time I say I like a girl, you immediately got to say she's got like a fat ass where she's got no tits or like a horse face or whatever, you know? Jessica Goldman is like the first girl I ever had a chance with who is like clearly good looking enough that you weren't able to make me feel like a second rate asshole for wanting to go out with her. You're really making me mad. That's what you're mad about? Because of the time I said the girl Susan had a horse face? That's just the way I talk, man. We all talk that way. It doesn't mean anything. You can't, like, suddenly turn around and act all fucking hurt and sensitive about that shit. That's the way we are with each other. Besides, that girl Susan did have a horse face, and everybody else could see it. I'm just the only one who fucking says it. So when you are with a really good-looking girl, I fucking say that. So don't give me the shit from the back benches, the fucking peanut gallery, just because it's total bullshit. And I'm already so sick of you after hanging out with you for less than 24 hours in a row that I'm like two seconds away from beating the fucking shit out of you, you little fucking asshole. What do you mean I'm not on your side? Warren, I'm sure you love me, man, and you're totally like my... Mm. <laughs> I'm sure you love me, man, and you're totally like my personal hero, but... I really don't get the feeling that you are, that you are. Dennis gets up. His face twists into a strange shape, and then he breaks out with a surprising choking sob. <laughs> he starts crying. This goes on for a moment. Warren watches him coldly. What are you crying about? You think I'm crying about? I assume you feel bad about something you think has happened to you. No. It's because you said I was your hero. Oh. Dennis goes to the kitchenette and blows his nose with a paper towel. So what are you saying? You want to, like, stop being friends with me? I don't know, man. I'm not, like, breaking up with you. I'm not your girlfriend. What are you saying? I don't know. I, I can't really. Let's drop it. Let's just drop it. All right. 
Can I have that money? Yeah, this gives more than nine hundred dollars. Wow. I'm only eighteen hundred short. Well, I'll just start moving what's left of this shit today and see how much we can scrape up. It doesn't matter. You wanna smoke pot? Alright. Gus goes to his table and takes out a small plastic bag of pot. Where did you get that? Got it from Stewie last night. Christian sold him some. Still like to find out where Christian got it. It just fucking pisses me off that these ragamuffins are always running around copping drugs that I don't know about. I was just gonna get some of that heroin from Stewie until it killed him. I just hope it's understood in the community that this coke is like really, really good and Stewie just overdid it. Sure it is. Then it starts rolling a joint. It's just sort of amazing that one of us actually died, you know? It's like my dad always saying, you know how bad you guys would have to fuck up before anything really serious ever happened to you? You and your friends from the Upper West Side who went to that fucking school where they, they think it's going to cripple you for life if they, teach you kids, if they teach you how to spell. Do you know what happens to other kids who do the kind of shit you kids do? You guys do? They die, man. Or they go to prison. Or they shoot each other. And the only difference is between you and them is my money. It's like a big fucking safety net, but you can't stretch it too far, man, because your sister fell through it. But the fact is, he's just so freaked out of his mind that he did so well, and it all blew up in his face anyway. Like, he did this great enterprising thing for himself, and in his family, and his family made a fortune in this incredibly tough racket, and he got a house in the park without any help from anyone. And he never felt bad for anyone who couldn't do the same thing. But when he was at the height of his power, he totally lost control of his own daughter. And she ended up being beaten to death by some guy from, from the world next door to us. And there was nothing you could do about it. So for the last nine years, he's been trying to literally pound his life back into shape. But it's really not going too well. Because he's totally by himself. You know? Yes. I can't believe you don't think I'm on your side. So, what do you do? This is from a very great distance. Oh. All right. All right. All right. All right. You're on my side. So, what are you going to do? I don't know, man. I guess I'll just go home. Dennis smokes pot. Warren sits there. The lights fade out. Yay! Yay. Great job, everybody. Go team. What a fucking play. Thank you so much. Yes. Amazing job, you guys. That was This Is Our Youth by Kenneth Longerin. Brought to you by Miscreant Theater Collective. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, please consider uh, now and in, in the future, if you have time for it, please consider coming to the discussion on Monday night. This is the best part of doing the book club like this, where you get to not just enjoy what we just read or what you just watched, um, but also get to, you know, practice our skills and have a little bit of fun and get into a, a wonderful discussion. So Monday nights, uh, the discussion starts at 7.30. Uh, the, you can log on as early as seven o'clock where while well, we all catch up, it would be good to see all of you. But other than that, yeah, any, anything else, Tom? Nope, all good. Okay. Go support youthbreakout.org youthbreakout.org. Yes. Uh, Right. Thanks so much. Okay. Stop. Are we ending this recording? Stop the recording now. Here we go. Great job. Yes. Listen.